you serve one out of four possible purposes in a woman's life when it comes to dating. Two of the purposes that you could serve are good. Two of the purposes that you would serve are pretty bad. So let me explain what those good potential purposes that you could serve are and what those two bad purposes or categories that you could fall into are as well. If you understand it, then you can always be the guy that she wants to date and avoid the trap that so many guys fall into. So let's list them out. When you're meeting a girl in the dating game, as a guy, she's gonna categorize you really quickly to try to figure out what purpose you would serve to serve to her. Remember, you are not the star of her show. She is the star of her show, and she's gonna be evaluating you to figure out what role in her life you're gonna play. She's the star, and you're a support character. What kind of support character are you gonna be in her life when she meets you? It's gonna be one of these four things. Number one is the kind of one night stand passionate guy. The one, the guy to have a physical connection with, but maybe not have a relationship with. Number two is the boyfriend type of guy. Kind of guy who makes her feel special, shows her a good time, the kind of guy that she would value dating. Number three is kind of this super flamboyant, energetic, happy, agreeable, positive vibe best friend. Historically, that'd be called like the gay best friend and some, you know, guys who are gay, they make great gay best friends because they are, they are super playful, but they're fun, they're good vibes, they're great to have around. And as a straight guy, you don't wanna be that kind of guy. And number four is the guy who's just nothing at all. She'll take one look at you and think this guy is not fun, he's not a boyfriend, he's not gonna be a lover, so he's nothing. And a lot of guys get put into that category, which is where you don't wanna be, which is what this video is all about. So let's summarize that again. Passionate one, the boyfriend one, super flamboyant one, or the nothing one. You wanna be in categories one or two. I'm Alex Social, probably the most experienced live dating coach in the world. And when I do my live immersion programs all around the world, including here in Warsaw, I see my students that I can make it really clear to them what category they as guys fall into when they're talking to these girls. Usually it's the nothing guy, sometimes it's the flamboyant guy. So when they come on my live programs, we work to evolve students to change them from being the nice guy or the flamboyant guy to becoming the kind of guy that a woman or girl will look at and immediately think, I want that guy to ask me out. I can see that guy as being my kind of boyfriend. I wanna get his attention and make him like, that's what we wanna achieve here. So let's talk first about those last couple of categories, the nothing guy and the flamboyant guy. Now you might be the kind of guy who works really hard, you go to the gym, you dress kind of properly, you've got a good job, you're respectful to people, respectful to women, you go to the bar, you even read self-help blogs, but you're still getting dumped into the category of the nothing guy lovely girls look at you and they just think you're a non-event. You're not fun, you're not exciting. And they might say, hello, nice to meet you, okay. And they're just nice to meet you, bye, and they're done, done. You're categorized wrong. That's kind of like the starting point, usually where most guys start. So you go from being a nothing kind of guy and then you start being all energetic and we call it tractor beam game. So you're super energetic and you start doing things that kind of make them react to you. But you start to be liked but you're never respected, you never fear loss. That's a bad sign if you're in the flamboyant guy zone. That means that you're doing things and you need to see visual feedback to hope that the person that you're talking to is gonna like you. So all of that extra energy and that flamboyance doesn't get you put in the right category. She's gonna you know, have a positive vibe towards you and be friends with you and give you a warm welcome. But if you ask on a date, she's gonna think, no, 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 he's just my, you're just my friend. You're fun, you're a fun guy. I like you, don't respect you, don't want you, don't desire you, don't fear losing you, don't seek your approval, or don't fear your disapproval, all right? That's category three. Don't wanna be in those two, so how do we get to the next category? Then you've got category two. Getting into category two, where a woman would immediately class you or identify you as the kind of guy that might be the boyfriend type. These are much more subtle things that sometimes a beginner guy can't really understand. A woman will understand the kind of guy who might be the boyfriend type to be quite calm in his demeanor, self-respecting, not hyper aware of how he is or isn't affecting people. Lower value guys who are hoping to get attention, who are hoping to make something happen, who get put in the friend zone or they get put in the nothing zone. The guy who gets it, he won't be trying to be impressive and he won't worry about not being unimpressive, right? So he's not gonna be managing expectations. He will also have a lot of self-respect and do things on his own terms. What that will do, if a woman meets a guy like that, a guy who's essentially being himself and taking things slowly and steadily, can look a woman square in the eye, take his time with her, she's gonna think, hmm, there's something about that guy. He holds himself well. He's not in a rush. He's not defensive. He's not trying to impress me. He's not overly energetic. He's comfortable in his own skin. That gets her asking the question, what is it about that guy? Is he interested in me? 
Is he single? He's clearly high value. Why is he high value? And that gets her curious and that can start the process really well. Then it's up to the guy if he's curious and if he has backbone enough to make the move, start the conversation, keep the conversation going, share himself, make a plan, call to action, ask for the drink, the dance, the meetup, the phone number, all of those things. And then you can court the girl or the woman, you can host the girl or the woman from being somebody that you don't know to the point that she thinks, this is a great guy. I really would be interested in getting into a dating relationship with this kind of guy. And then we've got category number one. And some women will look at some guys and think that is the kind of guy that I only want to have intimacy with and not really form a relationship with. And this can happen, you know. You guys, a lot of the time, will look at a girl or a woman and think, I only want to have intimacy, but I don't want to have a relationship. It goes both ways, right? Whether you act on that or it comes true or not, case by case basis, but it's very rare sort of thing. But in order to be the kind of guy who's like the, the passionate lover type, you really need to be it. You need to be clearly oozing abundance with a lot of experience with intimacy, with experience in dating and connecting. And this is normally signified by genuine high status or genuinely incredible charisma, good looks, luxurious lifestyle, things like tattoos, great fashion, high status within the context of the people that you're meeting. So if you wanna be, become the kind of guy who has a lot of intimate relationships, and not be the dating kind of guy. Being that kind of role, that role of intimacy in a woman's life, some women are looking for that. Maybe they're getting over a seriously emotional relationship. Maybe they're in an adventurous period in their lives for a certain stage and they're not looking for emotional burden and emotional connection. It can happen. So there's a bit of a fine line between being the guy who is like the boyfriend type and the lover type. And that depends even what phase of your life you're in. Oftentimes, if you're gonna be the lover type of guy, you wanna be brash and reckless and adventurous and thrilling, loud and charismatic. So the women that you're meeting, they think to themselves, that guy is gonna be a lot of fun for a short amount of time, but I don't really imagine introducing him to my parents. I don't really imagine wanting to fall in love with him. I imagine that if I was to hook up with that guy, my friends would be pretty impressed. My parents would be unimpressed. I'm going to feel like I've kind of achieved something. I've caught a guy who's popular with other girls. So you can be that guy, but it takes a lot of genuine work and energy on your part. And usually there's more expenses involved. What I'm most interested in this video as a dating coach for guys is to get out of the nothing zone and the friend zone into the boyfriend zone. So let's delve into that. So here's the hard bit, to get from going to be categorized badly to be categorizing well, and generally avoid being the super friendly guy, avoid being the nothing person and become the boyfriend type. Guess what, it comes back to all of that kind of dating and self-development advice that you've heard from everybody over the years. If you're the quiet guy and you're getting nowhere and you're not dressing properly, you're not composed in your own body, to be the boyfriend type, that self-respecting type, here's a couple of things that need to happen. Quick subcommunication checklist check. Keep your body weight in your hips, not in your upper body. Be careful that your eyes are not popping out of your head, listening and getting really eager. Be more relaxed. Don't rush your responses. Don't be fixated on the person when you're talking to them. Talk to them and be aware of your surroundings at the same time, almost dividing your attention. Don't be too eager to keep the conversation going and don't always be agreeable. In order to go from being the nothing guy to the something guy, to getting categorized properly, you need to start the conversation, keep the conversation going, being willing to deal with imperfections or awkwardness. You need to do those things and know that you might get some pushback, you might get some tests. Stand up for yourself and insist. And then a really, a really nice thing happens when you're in your transitional phase, and this video is about learning, this industry is about learning, and ex new experiences that transform you from being a nothing guy to a something guy. When you go and have your conversation and you start asking, then you're gonna have real life experiences and you're kinda gonna train yourself and you're gonna get real life positive reinforcement that things are going in the right direction, that things are going in the way that you want them to go and you're beginning to become the kind of person that is put into the, cat the attractive category. So you should then be able to start walking up to people and having that self-trust, what we call invisible game. You achieve better results by doing less. So counterintuitive in this capitalist world that we live, by doing less, you do better. By holding your frame, you do better. So in order to make the leap from being a non-event to a good guy, you gotta do all the right things. You need to ask, you need to be willing to deal with the backlash, and that can be hard, obviously. So if you have a friend to hold you accountable, watch videos like this, get coaching like this, get mentorship, all of that helps. If you wanna become the kind of the passionate lover kind of guy, well, you're playing with fire. You know, you need to dress the part, draw social attention, ask for a lot more, propose more exciting things, 
drinking, dancing, adventures, travel, hotels, all that crazy stuff. And then you can be that kind of guy, but that's honestly not for everybody. And even then, if you want to be the lover kind of guy, most women in the adult dating pool are not looking for lover type relationships, maybe if they're on holiday. But even then, you're competing with genuinely super wealthy, super good looking, super financially abundant guys, and you don't need to do that. So you might even be like the player type of guy, or you want to be the player type of guy, but that's not going to yield a happy dating life because that's not what adult women in the dating pool are looking for. So bringing it back to the beginning, women and girls are going to categorize you in one of four ways. You want to be in the boyfriend category, and what's required of you is to do less. Remember, when if you walk into a party or a bar or a club or something like that, you hope to meet the girlfriend type. When a woman or a girl walks into an event, she hopes to meet the boyfriend type. And you're actually guilty until proven innocent. She hopes that you're guilty of being a great potential partner until you let her down by not saying anything or you're overreactive. And then her imagination of what you could be, it goes away and you go from being potentially categorized well to immediately categorized badly. Basically, you need to be a little bit normal and boring, dress well, have self-respect and have a calm demeanor, and then move things forward and start chatting up that girl and asking her out. Patience is required, but patience can't be faked. Belief in yourself and faith in yourself is required, and faith in yourself can't be faked. The good thing is, on an even playing field, you have every right to have faith in yourself in the circumstances. So here's the big lesson, and here's what deserves a bloody like. It's not about how you perform. It's about what kind of person you are, and then you being aware of the categorization and perception process that the girl or woman has when she meets you. You serve one of four purposes in her life, and if you're not serving the boyfriend purpose or the lover purpose, you're gonna be the best friend or you're gonna be nothing. It's all about your behavior and your mindset. And as guys, we're designed to start with a humble mindset and then evolve to be your own kind of hero mindset. You're designed to evolve, but normally you need to get that from a father or a brother or a rite of passage or mentorship or coaching. And that's of course what we do with these videos. And if you wanna take things more seriously, join our mentorship or join one of our live programs. We have the two week natural, which is coming up in cities like Melbourne, Thailand, Barcelona, New York, and a couple of cities in Europe next year. And we also have the online mentorship where I can talk with you all of this time, but I need to give every individual guy individual feedback to help him unravel what he's doing wrong to become the kind of guy who has his phone blowing up with responses to the messages that he's sending out, having girls escalating on him when he sits down on dates and asking and having, you know, you can be the guy who has the girl suggesting, why don't I, why don't I stay at your house tonight? Too late for me to go home, I could stay at your place you can be that guy. You go from not getting it to getting it, and then you're super happy, and you can go from stressed about women to really enjoying the woman that you're with and being proud of the relationship that you've made. Happy guy in the dating game with a beautiful girl or options in your life. Alex Social, reporting from Poland. Comments, likes below, and check the link in description to book a call with us, and we can help you fulfill that vision of the beautiful girlfriend that you want. That's what we do.